Any country that uses a currency has a need for accountants, whether it be a capitalist country like the United States or a strongly anti-capitalist country such as North Korea. Financial statements are an important document prepared by accountants, and without them, economies could not operate effectively or efficiently. There are four main types of financial statements. First is the statement of cash flows. This shows the inflows and outflows of cash and cash equivalents for a company. The purpose of this statement is to assess whether a company has enough cash and is able to cover its obligations when they fall due. As such, the statement of cash flows is prepared using the cash accounting method. This implies that revenue is recorded when received and expenses are recognized when paid. Secondly is a statement of retained earnings, also called the equity statement. This statement deals with a company's equity and details things such as dividends paid, owners' investments, and capital withdrawals. Third is the statement of financial position, also known as the balance sheet. Here, the assets, liabilities, and equity of a company are listed. This statement is typically written using the accrual accounting system. Accrual accounting means that the revenue is recorded when earned and expenses are recognized when incurred. For example, a job that has been performed but has not yet been paid for would be recorded. Conversely, expenses such as utilities would be recorded despite a bill not being received yet. Lastly is a statement of financial performance, also known as the income statement or profit and loss statement. This statement outlines the revenues earned and expenses incurred by the company for the specific time period. In this video, only the last two will be discussed. But before that, why are the preparation of these statements so important? The first reason is control. With the information provided, company owners or directors can make the relevant decisions such as putting aside some extra money for large payments that must be made soon or to investigate why expenses have risen more than revenues. The second reason is that these statements communicate information to outside parties. Who would look at these statements? Banks and other lenders would be interested in these statements to determine how risky a company is and whether they should lend the company money. Investors would look to see whether a company is profitable or not and decide whether to invest in the company. Similarly, suppliers and vendors could decide whether to extend credit to the company by assessing the likelihood of repayment. Government departments such as the tax department would check these statements to ensure that correct taxes are being paid. And for larger companies, the public and media would also scrutinize a company's financial statements. So let's have a look at the statements of a fictitious printing company, starting with a statement of financial position or balance sheet. Firstly, notice that the statement is as at the 31st of January. A company is a dynamic place with money constantly changing hands. As such, the statement of financial position offers only a snapshot of the company at the date it was prepared. So what goes on this statement? First to be recorded are assets. Assets are divided into two categories, current assets and non-current assets. Current assets are those that are deemed to be short term and would change within 12 months. These include cash, accounts receivables, which are monies that others owe you, and inventories. The next is prepaid expenses. Due to the accrual accounting method, sometimes a bill must be paid in advance, although it has yet to be used. Because of this, prepaid expenses are treated as an asset as they hold future economic benefit. And lastly, short-term investments. These could be a number of different investment types. Next are non-current assets, which are also called fixed assets. These include land and buildings, equipment such as machinery, vehicles, and long-term investments. Also note that if any of these assets, or a portion of them, are expected to be disposed of within the next 12 months, that portion can be transferred to current assets. Add these together and we have our total assets. For our liabilities, we again separate them into current and non-current. Current liabilities include our accounts payable, 
our loans payable in the next 12 months, unearned revenue, which is when others have paid us in advance for good or services, and accrued expenses, which are expenses we recognize we have incurred but have not been billed for yet. For our non-current liabilities, most companies will only have a long-term loan payable. However, government departments and large companies may also have bonds or notes payable. We can then add these together to find our total liabilities. The next thing we can calculate are our net assets, which are our total assets minus total liabilities. The last element to the statement of financial position is owner's equity or simply equity. Here we record our capital, which is the investment by owners and retained earnings, which shows how much each owner is entitled to. In large businesses with shareholders, this would be slightly different as things such as dividends would also be present. And finally, we can total our equity. Notice that the equity and the net assets totals are the same. This follows the formula assets minus liabilities equals owner's equity. Now, let's move on to the statement of financial performance. As mentioned earlier, this statement is also known as the income statement or profit and loss statement. Notice here that the statement is for the month ending 31st of January. This is because it contains all activities that have occurred in this specific time period, in this case a month. So what goes on this statement? First we have revenue, in this case sales. For a service type business we would have fees. Then we have sales returns to give total revenue. From this we subtract the cost of goods sold. This would include the cost of purchase, whether it be base raw materials or a product from a wholesaler. The cost of conversion or processing, which includes parts, labor and supplies used. And allocated overheads, which may be different for each type of good. This gives our gross profit. To this we add discounts received, if any. The reason behind this is because it is an expense at another company and so needs to be recorded as a revenue in our books. Then we subtract operating expenses. These are expenses which are not directly involved in the cost of goods sold and include discounts allowed, wages, this would be for people such as admin staff, rent, utilities including water, power, gas and telecommunications, Depreciation, which is a measure of how much a resource, typically our equipment or vehicles, have been used up. And lastly, doubtful debts, which are accounts receivables which we have little hope of recovering. These are not the only expenses that may be incurred, as there may be other industry specific costs and things such as insurance. We can then calculate our operating profit before tax. Then calculate our tax rate and then our profit after taxes. Well this concludes today's video. I hope you have gained some benefit from watching. Thanks for listening.